Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to this week's webinar. Uh, I think you'll find our presenter very interesting. Uh, I know there's some new people on today's call, so I'll, I'll tell everybody a little about who I am and what I do. Um, I am Bruce Rosenblatt. I am the owner of Senior Housing Solutions, and I've been in this business for over 30 years. I provide advice for people who are thinking about senior housing for the future. Uh, I have been doing this for quite a while. I am familiar with all the different options in this area. And, and so I stay current with all of them. And the best part is that most of the time my services are 100% free. So everybody loves free. And, and so most of the times my services are 100% free. I get paid on the back end from the different communities once somebody moves in. So as, as a, because I've been in this area for a while, so it's such a long time, I try to be a, you know, not only a resource for senior housing, but I try to be a resource to my, to my clients for, you know, to provide them education or to provide them other resources that they may need um, to make their life better or to make their move any easier. Um, I have known John Hoglin for, I would say a good 15 years. Uh, we have, we've known each other. We have had wine together. Um, he, John is a great guy. John has actually helped my mom out with her, her hearing aids. And, and so I can, I can totally endorse John. If anybody is thinking about hearing aids or thinking about or wanting advice on hearing aids, I would say reach out to John. He is just a, he's a great guy. He's got a great sense of humor a lot of great information. And um, so I, I, I'm very pleased to have John speak. I know um, we've been working hard. He's, he's been working very hard on his presentation today. And, um, you know, I, I know he has a lot of great information to share. So, so John, I'm going to let you take it from here. And the show is yours. And, and just, just so you all know, uh, John's going to do his presentation. And then if you have questions as we go, go along, you have a little chat button at the bottom and you can write your questions in um, as, as John speaks, or at the end, we'll do a question and answer and we'll just fire away at John and see, see how, how, how good he is. So, so John, uh, the show is yours and welcome, John. It's great to have you. And um, I, I'm really looking forward to your presentation today. Well, thank you, Bruce. And uh, as he said, my name is John Hoagland, and my wife and I have audiology practices throughout Southwest Florida. Um, we moved to the area, we were 14 year Bradenton residents, so we opened our first practice in Benita Springs next to that national landmark called Royal Scoop Ice Cream. Uh, no trip to Benita is complete without a stop there. Um, and then here in Estero, we opened Southwest Florida tinnitus in here. And we put tinnitus in the title to let people know there's hope. Uh, too often in the medical community, when you talk about ringing ears, the message goes something like this. Suck it up, buttercup. You're stuck with this for life. Nobody will ever be smart enough to give you a smidge of help and hope. And it's going to get a lot worse. Get ready. Have a nice day. Pay on your way out. And, and I always thought that was a horrible message. Um, and so, and then in Fort Myers, we are by Gulf Coast Hospital and we have a place in Cape Coral as well. Uh, I've been in the field for 36 years, my wife 34. And uh, I find in general hearing as a topic, most people don't know nearly as much as they'd like to. Um, I always say uh, you get a group of friends sitting around the table and something, but he mentions their blood pressure readings a lot of people understand those numbers nowadays. They mention their cholesterol levels, their blood sugar levels are understood. But boy, you start talking about hearing and you get a lot of glassy stares and a lot of misinformation. And we've always tried to be an educational resource. We literally uh, have hundreds of lectures throughout the year back when we could do live lectures. And this is my first in uh, this Zoom format. So, so thank you for attending. You know, it's, uh, they call it the new normal. Um, we have seen some things that have radically changed due to COVID, but some basics uh, remain the same. Um, and one of the basics is that is showing up even more so because of the current situation is I strongly, strongly feel 
that every human being somewhere in their medical records should have a current hearing test showing how their hearing is at the different pitches. The Surgeon General's guidelines, we, they say have these medical tests with this frequency at these ages. Where hearing is concerned, from 50 and above, the recommendation is every five years at 65 and above, they actually shorten it to every two. But the most important, in my opinion, is a baseline hearing test. Not unlike a baseline PSA for a male, baseline mammogram for a female. It's one of the baselines they really stress. People will come into our practice and they'll say something like, John, my doctor just put me on three new medications I've never taken in my life. And in the last three weeks, I think my hearing has changed quite a bit. Can you please check? So I do a test, I find the problem, and they're right. It's the kind of problem the medication might cause. So they'll say, please write to my doctor. I always say, sure, let me see a copy of the last hearing test before you started the medication. And I don't know what it is about ears, but people don't think to check till after the disaster has occurred. So since Patricia and I opened our doors, we've always, always offered these as a complimentary basis. And we do a full hearing evaluation, chart exactly how you hear each of these pitches, and most importantly, give you a dated copy that I want you to hang on to in your own personal medical files. I'm a big believer in owning your own records. So this way, if in the future, anything changes, and I see sudden change due to a virus, due to a TIA or a mini stroke, adult onset diabetes, a bad reaction anesthesia during surgery, chemotherapy is a big one, medication, radiation treatments, uh, even an auto accident, the airbags blow up because they're so darn loud. Well, now you can always go back and say, okay, this is what my hearing was like in 2020. What happened from the auto accident and prove it. What happened from the medication? What happened from the anesthesia? And by monitoring it regularly, you can catch hearing problems earlier in the curve. And where treating hearing loss is concerned, the general rule is whoever starts with the mildest prescription wins when it comes to hearing loss. Um, and that will never change. Um, but what we've learned with COVID is very, very interesting in as far as how life has changed for the hearing impaired. So the first thing that we've noticed with the changeover with COVID is masks. They have hooks that go behind the ears and people are taking their masks off and their hearing aids are going flying. Well, sometimes people don't feel it. Now it's an amazing thing. Um, Apple has paired with many hearing aid manufacturers now, and Apple had this feature that said, find my iPhone. Well, now we have a find my hearing aid button, and uh, you push the button and it'll give you the address of the Walgreens, uh, where you happen to lose, oh, I lost it at Walgreens. And when you get in the Walgreens, there's a hot, warm, and cold button. But um, the type, the tie back behind the head are a little bit safer or they have these clips that people can use and you clip both halves of your mask behind it. But it is, a, and manufacturers have never had more claims for lost hearing aids than since COVID. Um, quarantining, feel, you know, everybody's getting cabin fever and now we're about to kind of pull back some more and stay inside. And if you have hearing loss and your method of communication is phone calls only where you don't get visual clues, it becomes challenging. I, we work with somebody that if you have a landline, I can put you in touch with and then they can reach out to you and send you, because they're not doing installs, but send you a, home, a phone for the hearing impaired where the words actually come across as you go. Um, and that helps. But now we're finding that things really, uh, interpersonal communication is really needed now. The other thing that we're finding is that the face masks are good at covering up for the spread of germs, but you don't see people's lips anymore. So a lot of times, most of the masks we use, you're not gonna see a big drop in volume, but what you lose is visual clues. So many times with the type of hearing loss that's called high pitch hearing loss, we hear in the right volume 
We just don't understand exactly which word is which. And similar things can be confusing. Words like 15 and 50, 16 and 60, 7 and 11. Pass me that dish might come across as pass me that fish. And uh, that can be confusing when they're serving roast beef that night. But there, because we see people's lips, we can tell the difference. Because if you watch someone say the word patch, it doesn't look anything like the word cat. But if someone says patch or cat when you don't see their lips, it's not quite as easy. And the other thing that is happening is there's a lot of stress. People are worried about their health. They're worried about their finances. They're worried about their families. Now they're worried about race riots and then what's going on with their country. And stress fuels tinnitus. Now tinnitus is the head noise. That's the ringing, the buzzing, the roaring, the hissing, the clicking. Some people hear crickets, steam escaping. As I said, this is something we're very, very good at dealing with but it is really, really accelerated due to stress. Cortisol, the stress hormone, is like kerosene on a fire to somebody that has tinnitus. And it just makes it louder and it makes it, and a lot of tinnitus people, they stay busy, they stay active, they try to keep their mind off it, they go do things and well, we're quarantined now. So that doesn't happen. But uh, this is going to be a very brief tinnitus overview. A tinnitus lecture is very comprehensive. And Bruce and I were talking, if there are an interest in the audience of having a pure tinnitus lecture, we can do that. We can come back and we can do another lecture. There's 38 million Americans who suffer with treatable hearing loss through hearing aids, but there's over 50 million with tinnitus. But um, laughter is the best medicine. So here's a little uh, funny for you. And for those of you that are listening over the phone, the doctor is looking at the cow with the cowbell around his neck. It says, the ringing in your ears? I think I can help. <laughs> but um, in reality, that with tinnitus, there, there's really three legs of what we call the tinnitus stool. There's number one, the sound itself. Number two, there's how much that sound draws our attention. And then number three, how much stress or distress that brings into our life. And, and the problem is people really don't understand the condition. So it really can increase their stress. And stress fuels tinnitus and tinnitus fuels stress. So somebody say, oh no, my ears are ringing. And it's like they just took a volume control and cranked it up. Oh no, it's getting worse. Oh no, I'll never sleep tonight. And guess who's staring at the ceiling? Now, right now, I know some of you may want to just stay home till the, the embers die down and this gets more normal. And I can talk to you by a, a FaceTime chat or a Zoom if you could do this type of thing. I can talk to you over the telephone, but I want to get you this very fine publication that is called the Consumer's Guide to Tinnitus Relief. Um, we offer this book. It covers the various different types and causes, what a tinnitus assessment is, all of the different treatments they've come around with, and there are a lot of them. And we'll get it out to you. There's no charge for this. We can, we can mail it to you. And, uh, and I also always do a complimentary tinnitus assessment for people and a consultation. When, when Patricia and I opened our practice, we decided we never wanted expense to be a barrier to knowledge. So all of these initial consultations are completely free of charge. All I ever ask is if you learn a lot, lot and you like the way that you're treated and somebody says, where's a good place to go for your ears? Tell them about our practice and our clinicians. Yeah, that's how we've built our practice over the last 30 years. But that one is very, very helpful. Now that's if you got a little problem, if you're curious, if you're slightly bothered. But there are some people that are really bothered right now. And for that, I'll give you three different approaches that you can use. The first is we've established a pandemic hotline. And this will be if people are uh, needing help with hearing aids, which I'll discuss in a little bit, or needing help with their tinnitus. And if locally in the 239 area code, you dial 360-3753. Three, three. 
and just let them know you're having trouble. I'll call you, I'll call you after hours, I'll call you whenever you feel that you need to reach out. I wanna be there for you and I wanna give, point you in the right direction. There's a wonderful uh, organization called the American Tinnitus Association and we followed and sponsored their works for years and years and years. Their hotline has never received more calls than since COVID hit, but they have an 800 number 800-634-8978. And if you want to get resources online, ATA, American Tinnitus Association, ATA.org is filled with information. But there are some people that are really, really bad and are really at the breaking point. And there's also a suicide prevention hotline. And that number is 800 800- Two seven three eight two five five. So for those things, um, please reach out. Now there are things that are called comorbidities. What a comorbidity means is this health issue can now influence this health issue. So for example, those with diabetes, diabetics are twice as likely to have hearing loss as non-diabetics. Diabetics are more likely to suffer falls because of peripheral neuropathy. So their their legs don't work because they can't feel their feet. Well, untreated hearing loss can dramatically increase the risk of falls. People with um, diabetes are much higher instance of mild cognitive impairment or called MCI, but with um, diabetes, that MCI turning into full-blown di- uh, Alzheimer's and dementia is a much, much higher rate. It's downright scary. Untreated hearing loss also influences that. So these are examples of comorbidities. And there's been so much published about this tie between your memory and your hearing that I wanted to give you a little more background about that topic in particular. Cognitive decline. Um, Adults with untreated, that means you're not wearing hearing aids, untreated hearing loss experience a 30 to 40% faster decline in our cognitive abilities. That is huge. That's a big, big difference. Um, And here's the basic gist of that one. So what will do, what happens is they use an analogy of your brain being like your computer. Well, data is getting into your computer all day, every day, through each of our five senses. So when I rub my fingers across my shoulder, my sense of touch is telling me if my lab coat is smooth or if it's rough. When I smell something, I know if it's fresh or stale. When I taste something, I know if it's bitter or sweet. But most of the data getting into your computer all day, every day, is from our eyes, what we see and read, and our ears, what we hear. And there is a phraseology that's often used in the computer world that says, garbage in, garbage out. And that ongoing misinformation really can begin to take its toll. In your inner ear, there are these 26,000 little hearing nerves or cilia that send electric impulses up your auditory nerve to the auditory processing part of your brain called the auditory cortex. Your brain is basically electrically wired. I I, I bang my hand on something, electric impulses shoot up my arm and tell me that I've hurt myself. I wanna move my hand, electric commands come and tell my fingers and tendons and muscles. When the flow of electricity stops reaching that processing area, the Pennsylvania School of Medicine found brain atrophy begins to set in in that processing area. Now, for the use of hearing aids, Years later, we get sound to the brain, but the brain struggles to turn into language. You know, when everybody thinks about their hearing, they think about it as a condition of the ear, but it's a two-part. All the ear does is collect the sound. It's the brain that turns it back into language again. 
And, and that's the one where you see the guy that everybody, the friend, the neighbor, the person in your church or community or your family, and everybody's been after him 15, 20 years. Go get your ears fixed, Bob. Go get your, I'm tired of yelling at you. Get your ears fixed. And he does. And everybody's hip, hip, hooray. And you see him 30 days later. You say, Bob, how you doing? How you doing with the hearing aids? And he looks at you and says, the world's a lot louder, but it isn't any clearer. You have just witnessed the long-term effect of this auditory deprivation, and, and it's irreversible. Now, Johns Hopkins now took it one step further. And with Hopkins research, they found that this brain atrophy can also lead to brain shrinkage. And the only other place we had ever seen brain shrinkage was in the memory, the dementia, and Alzheimer's. So according to John Hopkins research, mild, mild untreated hearing loss doubles the risk of memory problems later in life, doubles the risk of dementia and Alzheimer's. Moderate, where most people kind of sort of begrudgingly admit something's starting to go wrong, moderate makes it three times as likely and severe untreated, untreated meaning not wearing hearing. It seems like we can stem this by getting that electricity back to the brain, but severe untreated hearing loss makes it five times as likely for dementia, Alzheimer's, and memory problems. And I'm one of those, I like to stack the deck in my favor. I, I hope they find a cure for this dementia and Alzheimer's sometime in our lifetime. Um, I, we see it so much, especially in our nursing home program, and it's horrible but the little things that you can do to help yourself. Now, one thing I always temper this way, it isn't one of those chicken little, the sky is falling, if you lose your hearing, you're gonna, everybody who loses their hearing is gonna lose their mind. It's nothing like that at all. It's a multiplier. So it means you take your original risk factors. So if somebody has no history of memory problem in the family whatsoever, they have never had high blood pressure, or high triglycerides. They haven't been a significant smoker or drinker. They haven't been a diabetic or a pre-diabetic. They haven't had clogging of the arteries. They haven't had an aneurysm or a stroke. They haven't had a significant head or neck injury, et cetera, et cetera. Well, even five times a very, very tiny number will remain a tiny number. But if anybody has elevated risk, if any of those areas, doubling that risk by ignoring mild hearing loss has never made any sense to me at all. You know, just think sound mind in sound body. And if there's something wrong, fix it. And the earlier in the curve, the better. Now, it can affect you in other ways now. And they're finding the feeling of isolation. You know, people go to a party back when parties are okay. Go out with the family to a restaurant when restaurants will reopen again. But when you're in that environment where there's multiple talkers, that's where the confusion really sets in. And they feel isolated. And then slowly they don't want to go because it's not enjoyable. And that social withdrawal is bad for you. So there's a lot higher, especially in women. Women with untreated hearing loss can be 45 times more likely to suffer with depression. So through this COVID pandemic, we're trying to offer to you ways that you can still reach out and get some help. Um, we are doing things to ensure that people are safe. Um, we're trying to take every step. We have all the PPE, we have the gloves, we have the mask, we have wipes. Everybody who comes into our practice, when you first get there, you'll check in from the curb. You call us, you tell us we're ready, and we'll tell you, we'll call you back when you're ready to see us. So when you see a patient walk out, that doesn't mean we're ready. 
because we go in and any place that the patient could have touched, everything is clean. They have these little booties that are nice that cover up the headphones so that we can replace those and keep everybody safe and sound on, and in between every test. If we're cleaning ears, um, we have a cleaning area in many of the offices and we have to re so don't race to the door because you saw somebody come up. I said, you know, bring a cool drink, relax, but we'll get to you. And if you have masks, bring them. If you don't, that's fine. We'll provide them for you. But we really, you never know in this world. The one thing that we've learned about this is that you just don't know. So we're going to be doing social distancing steps. And if you know of anybody who's quarantined and can't get out, who, can't, who has hearing aids that aren't working, life has changed. Someone goes to a hospital now, someone goes to their doctor's appointment now, their family's not let in. So the gentleman who always relied in medical appointments on his wife translating and remembering all the thing the doctor says, now they're there all by themselves. Nobody can remove a mask when you're in a hospitalization. And sometimes people are there for weeks. Well, the mask we wear, as I say, cut maybe a decibel or two. Those N95s you hear so much about, they can be 10 to 12 decibels. So now everybody has to raise their voice and everybody raising their voice seems they're angry with us. So all the people working with you, They'll minimize how much they talk to you, and they'll have to talk really loud, which sounds like they're very angry from the time our moms did it when we were little kids. So if someone has broken hearing aids, this is not the time to, to let that lie. You gotta get your hearing aids fixed. Now I know people have clinicians that they love, but they have children at home and they can't find suitable care. They have a high-risk spouse at home that they can't afford to be seeing patients. They'll reopen, but in the meantime, get your hearing aids to us. Uh, if, if you can't get out, if you're in a facility that says, listen, don't leave if you're high risk, any family member, any friend, put the hearing aids in a Ziploc bag with your name and phone number. If you have it, send a hearing test. Yeah, and another good reason why I wish people had hearing tests at home is we're having a lot of people bring hearing aids to us and we know what's wrong with the hearing aids, but we don't know what's wrong with the patient. So when this thing settles down, if you don't own one, I'll arrange and there's no charge. Again, just tell people about our practice, that's all I ask. But bring those to us, we'll come out to the parking lot, masks, gloves, get them from you, and then tell you where it is. And if it has to go to a manufacturer, all manufacturer warranties are completely free of charge. This is what we're doing for people right now. I can't stand the idea of someone being hospitalized with broken hearing aids and have that added stress and trauma. We'll fill the void. We'll, we'll do what we can do to help you through this. And so basic programming, warranty repair, any of that, it's all on us, but just don't sit home with that. Now, as you're seeing, we're video chatting. It is amazing. There's a medical FaceTime for hearing, we refer to it. And we can have our, I, I have a secret weapon, by the way, in dealing with these alternative times we have. I hired millennials. Millennials know this technology like the back of their hand. Dr. Newfer, Dr. Richter, Derek Wynn, Chris, our darling daughter, Avery, they all know this stuff. So they can help you get on this. And if you can hold the phone and point at the hearing aid, they can give you pointers, they can get you through. But now there's remote programming for hearing aids. One of the manufacturers, Starkey, they have this Livio model that they, during the pandemic, they were a way to set it up to where now we can work back and forth you stay in the comfort of your own home. We stay in our clinic. You respond to us back and forth by email with your complaint, and we can fix things. So there's a lot of things we can do to put a Band-Aid on the problem until you can get in and see somebody without putting yourself at risk. I don't want fear 
of, of encounters with people to mean that, well, I'll just have to wait till everything's all clear because who knows when that will be? Who knows when the vaccine? In the meantime, anything we can do to help, we will. So the, the numbers back up. If you want to do a hearing test, if you need a tinnitus assessment, if you need a tinnitus phone call, if you need us to work on your hearing aids, if you need somebody to drop their hearing aids, our pandemic hotline, that 360-3753, we're centralizing. We're bringing all these things into one specific, and then we're taking care of it for that. So I hope this has been beneficial. I really want to thank Bruce Rosenblatt for putting this together. You know, I have known Bruce a long time. And if you don't know where to go, the, the events that he has staged, the things that he knows, he is connected with everybody. He can give you the pros and cons of each of these individual facilities. He knows about home health care. He knows about putting you in touch with people if you need help in managing your affairs, how to do things. There isn't anything under the next chapter of your life that Bruce can't help you with. So if you know of anybody in that situation, there's one go-to guy rather than people trying to navigate the wires. Um, and we were gonna try to do questions and answers as well. So if there are things that, that you would like to know, um, let's see uh, how this works and I'll turn it back to, to Bruce to monitor um, and turn off the mutes and if somebody has questions. Well, thank you, John, and thank you for that nice endorsement. I really appreciate it. So if I got it right, you can go and get your uh, free hearing test, and then you can go next door and get ice cream. Is that right? That is correct. <laughs> Royal Scoop is back and open. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to unmute everybody here, see if people have any questions. Let's see here. You know, I think all of us are getting used to this whole brand new world. So, um, you know, but feel free to chime in. And um, People should be unmuted now. So if you have any questions for John, please raise your hand or. Or just shout it out. Josephine, hold on. Go ahead. Hold on. Hold on. I can't hear you yet. Yeah, I'm still seeing a lot of the mute signals. Hi, Josephine. Can you hear me now? Yes. Just to say thank you, Dr. Hogan. It was fascinating. Fortunately, so far, I don't have a hearing problem, but I've learned an enormous amount today. Thank you. Well, you're very welcome. And while your hearing is still good, that's the best time to get that snapshot of it. So when I think everything I'll gets more normal, we'll, we'll get you a baseline. I think I'll call you and get a baseline. That will be great. All right. Thank you. Thanks for the kind words. Dr. Hubbard, it's Paul. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, again, thank you for conducting the seminar. I just had one question, and that is, you mentioned that um, diabetics are more likely to suffer hearing loss, and adults with hearing loss experience a 30 to 40 percent decline in cognitive ability. My question is, is hearing loss a leading indicator of other diseases? So there are certain patterns with a hearing test that can actually lead us to believe that someone has uh, diabetes starting, for example. There are things that show up that can actually show cardiovascular issues with the pattern of hearing. Of course, your infection sinus issues, things like that. The um, tinnitus side of things, there's what we call a pulsatile tinnitus uh, that people hear almost in time with their heartbeat that can be an indication of clogging of the arteries. There are things we see in the ear canal based on the way the skin looks that can give us indications of, of referring out to other people as well. And, uh, but yes, there are more ties between things that, 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 than people really realize. And we're connected with people that can help. Uh, we have a diabetic coach, for example, that is on my lecture series. We have uh, people at Lee Health who are and, uh, down 
South and NCH who are very helpful from the balance uh, issues because your balance organ is also located in your ear and people that get up fast and are spinning and wobbly, we can make referrals out for you for that. So, so there are things that go on uh, where these, you know, your, all your health concerns can be interrelated like that. But yes, that's a good point. Thank you. I'll see you in the fall for a baseline test. Very good, sir. John, we have a couple of questions. So can you review the, the latest in hearing aids? What's, what do you see new on the market? So the newness on the market is really spectacular, actually. Um, a lot of these, especially the made for iPhone. Now, there's a, the, the problem with the Android world is a Samsung will function different than a Motorola, which will function different than a Pixel, which will be different than an LG, where an Apple is an Apple is an Apple. So all the manufacturers Apple has reached out towards. But there are things now where they're what they call health phones. They monitor certain bodily functions even. <laughs> there are people, it will count your steps for you and much more accurately than one of those wrist things because all you have to do is shake your wrist a lot and talk with your hands like I do and it looks like you ran a marathon. Um, but your ears, both ears have to be moving. So it counts your steps. It counts how often you get up each hour. All day long, it's giving you body and brain scores on an ongoing basis that are monitoring. They have a falls prevention or falls detection component. So the three most important <laughs> people in your life are loaded into your phone. Mom suffers a fall at the Publix at the corner of Immokalee and, and Golden Gate. Well, well, instantly, all three family members, the son in Pennsylvania, the uh, daughter in San Francisco, and the local care provider are alerted with GPS coordinates of where mom is. Fabulous technology. Um, for those with heart problems, there's sensors that can be put on the molds that go into the ear that will monitor heart rate and heart rate recovery. Back when we used to like international travel, they have uh, hearing aids now that have a translate feature. And someone can be talking to you in Italian and in your hearing aids, you're hearing them in English. Wow. It's remarkable. It, it covers your daily use. You can troubleshoot. Uh, there's times where you can tap up above your head with one manufacturer and you say, now, how do I change the wax filters? And it will walk you through the steps and on your phone will be those specific instructions. So yes, when I, when I think of the things I can do for people now versus 35 years ago, it, it's like we're not even in the same field. They are remarkable. Um, now, all these things work better if I catch it or um, a lot of people, because they're spending a lot more time watching television, realize the flaw of the fact that the speakers are so thin now because they want that screen to look so thin and they want it to look pretty. So they put them on the side or even the back and it bounces off the back wall and you take Floridians with our love of cathedral ceilings and tile on the floor. It's a reverberant. Now they have things that can plug into the television and it streams directly from the cable box into the hearing aids, corrected for your specific hearing problem. So the family member can put the volume wherever they want, including mute, and you can hear it in your hearing aids with none of the reverberation or echo of the room. So, so yes, there are marvelous, marvelous things that are actually going on in the field of hearing. Your phone calls go into both ears now. Um, the way your brain is wired, everything left ear goes to the right side of your brain, every right thing goes to the left side. And so sometimes people get so frustrated because only half the brain is involved in the processing that they'll turn it on speakerphone and they find they do much better the problem is in public, then everybody hears the other guy's conversation. So with this, you put it to your ear, both ears are hearing the signal and it blends and both halves of the brain can be involved in it. So uh, I've never seen a better time in today's uh, world. And that find my hearing aid feature has saved a lot of people a lot of money because it, it tells you specifically where it is. 
And when, you know, if you see one, two, three Baker Street, oh, I left it at my daughter's house. And then you've got that hot, warm and cold as you move from room to room. Now, if you're stable and the dog walks towards you and it says hot, 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 and the dog walks away, it says cold, 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 you got a different problem on your hands. <laughs> that's funny. John, that's funny. That sort of leads us into this next question is, what is the risk of long-term hearing loss with children and adults using, you know, headsets and listening to loud music? It is horrible, horrible, horrible. So the, now everybody's music is in their phone and they have these buds that put the sound directly in the ear. Okay, that's concentrated, really close to the drum. From a speaker across the room, it's not as concentrated. Now some of these companies are putting subwoofers and, and you know, the beats. And I mean, they're really wanting to blast this music into kids' ears. Now, when we were all growing up, if we turned our music too loud in our bedrooms, mom and dad would pound on the door, turn that wagon down. Nowadays, <laughs> parents have no knowledge of how loud their family member is listening to their music behind closed doors. So because of this, for the first time in our nation's history, there are more people under 55 who need hearing aids than there are people over 55 who need hearing aids. Staggering. And you know, we've done a lot of good work with OSHA on clamping down on things and industrial noise and occupational noise, and now recreational noise is destroyed. Which by the way, Watch the noise you're exposed to. If I mean, there is no earthly reason that you should be touching a lawnmower, weed whacker, leaf blower, power tool without plugs and or muffs, preferably both, to protect what you've got left. You know, it, it's senseless. I have, it's a stereotype, but I have some of my male patients who have screaming tinnitus and head noise from noise exposure that don't think twice about jumping on a riding lawnmower with no ear protection. And the silly, goofy reply I always get is, what's the point now, John? The damage is already done. And, and the way I always phrase it to friends and family and patients is this. Once you have noise yeah, reduced, hearing loss, ringing ear, or both, you need to become as obsessed about future noise as someone who has sun-induced skin cancer all over their body has to be obsessed about the sun's harmful rays because the sun will affect that person differently for the rest of their lives and noise will affect you differently for the rest of your life. Now, it doesn't mean somebody with skin cancer can only go out at night. They just need the heaviest sunblock plus the hat. And it doesn't mean you can't run the weed whacker. Just put in plugs plus mops. Go to a concert, go to a play, go to a musical have the spongy earplugs with you and just put them in. Some of my female patients, before they run a hairdryer, put the plugs in. No noise is good for you. And none of that stuff is even pleasant. So just create a barrier. That's great. Well, John, thank you so much. It's been very informative and educational. And it's always, always great to learn something from you, John. So great to see you. Great to see everybody. Um, hope, glad everybody's well. Um, and so I'm going to be sending out a recorded version of this, uh, this webinar a little bit later today. So you'll have a recorded version. And um, so if you, and I'll give you John's link if you, order, if you want to reach out to him. Uh, please do me a favor. Within your circle of friends, think of the people who may be isolated and, and just check on how their hearing aids are working for them. Or if you know of somebody that said to you in the past, this noise in my head, it drives me crazy. Check on them now and see if that's really gone off the charts because of all the stress in their life. And, and please pass my information along. I kind of count on, on people that, that we do to get a chance to talk to, to spread the word. I'll do anything I can to help as we get through this crisis. And, and thank you for your careful time and attention. I know there's other things you can do to spend your, your morning, but uh, I appreciate it. I hope you found it beneficial. Thank you, John. And, and again, you know, I do these webinars every Thursday at 10. 
Uh, next week, I'm going to take a break because it's July 4th weekend, but I'll be starting back up. I have a full slate of presenters in July, uh, very good presenters. I think you'll, you'll find them very interesting. I have um, just a variety of different people. So look forward to seeing everybody. Stay well. Uh, and again, if you have any questions about senior housing, please reach out to me. Happy to help you. If you have hearing questions, reach out to John and um, stay well and be well and talk to you soon. Yeah. Bye. Thanks, Bruce. Bye. Thank you.